All right, a little past midnight tonight, it begins. The trade war, we're told, is on, and everyone is stressing and hand-wringing about it, not the markets, and there's a reason for that. Uh, Lee Speakerman says because it's not a big deal. Uh, this is all going to work out, and that the president is taking the right tack. Uh, the Speakerman media president, Lee Speakerman, to explain a little bit more. So, Lee, you're not worried about this and argue quite the opposite, that the, the administration's approach is sound. Explain. Absolutely. What I'm worried about is the status quo and what was going on before President Trump took office. I mean, th this uh, international trade situation was a catastrophe for the United States. You may have read today that, and you probably talked about Chancellor Merkel in uh, Germany saying that uh, our uh, tough trade stance could cause an international financial crisis, which would be laughable if it wasn't so disingenuous. Right now, Germany, with Germany, we have nearly a $70 billion goods trade deficit, and then they underspend on defense by another $40 billion. So basically, American taxpayers and American workers are giving Germany and Merkel a gift of $100 billion a year. So no wonder she calls it a crisis. Uh, but the real crisis is what's happening to American workers, our $800 billion goods trade deficit with nations around the world, $150 billion of that with the European Union, uh, $400 billion of that with China, and no other nation in the G20 uh, other than a couple of the smaller nations, smaller economies, have that big a trade deficit as a percentage of their GDP, and, certain, and none of them have had it for as many years as we've had ours. It's a crisis, and so Trump is doing exactly the right thing. But does he do the right thing when he alienates everyone doing it? You know what I mean? Like, it's one thing to go after China, <laughs> one thing to go after Canada and Mexico and the European Union and India and everything else. Can he be a little bit more selective, show a little bit more discretion? Well, I would actually, first of all, when you, when you cut off the gravy train, it's amazing how people, uh, how people squeal and how terrible they say it is. Uh, what do you expect them to say? I mean, they're benefiting to the tune of $800 billion a year. Uh, but we have our own gravy uh, train, four. right? But, Lee, I mean, we, you know, you can go at this and cite certain areas and with Canada, dairy and lumber, and you're quite right. But when you average everything out, that's the best we can do when we look at average tariffs. Let's say the Canadians are at 4.5%. We're at three and a half percent. It's 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 not all that horrendous. I just wonder whether, for a country that charges twenty percent tariffs on light vehicles coming from abroad, what does the Pope say? Who are we to judge? Well, again, you have to look at you know you believe in numbers, Neil. You're a great uh, business anchor and correspondent over the years. The numbers don't lie. Eight hundred billion dollars were in the hole. So you can talk about lumber or specific areas or specific countries. You know, we have these establishment economists and these clueless politicians like Corker and uh, Sassy and uh, 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 Orrin Hatch of Utah and Toomey of Pennsylvania, people I agree with on many issues. Uh, who are waxing poetic about free trade, but you notice they never talk about that $800 billion deficit. They don't talk about the f nearly 4 million well-paying American jobs that's costing us. They don't talk about the direct impact that that's had low on the opioid we've got epidemic. We've record low on unemployment now, right? I mean... But incomes, and that's terrific, and that's a lot of that is due to the confidence and the investment created by President Trump's election and his policies so and his tax policies. you don't think he's going too far, Lee, or that he's... You know, I, I actually, I don't right. think he's going far enough yet. I think we need a 15 percent tariff on all imported goods. Leo, when people talk about tariffs being a tax, that's true. But as Ronald Reagan said, when you tax something, you get less of it. We have a huge fiscal crisis coming in this country, massive government deficits going forward. We have to get that revenue. Yes, we have to cut some spending, but that isn't going to be enough. We have got to raise revenue. I would rather tax imports and get less of those, which means more American jobs and more domestic investment, rather than raising income taxes again, which the Democrats want to do, which but, would hurt but that's the, the middle class and hurt the president's investment. president's goal is, right? I mean, if you are going to respond and fight fire with fire, and if you argue that the, these foreign countries are taking advantage of us, and you're going to respond in kind by sticking it to them, how does that solve anything? 
I actually don't think we're sticking it to them, Neil. What we're doing is trying to reach a, a reasonable equilibrium. If we can just knock 200 billion, 25 percent off of our goods trade deficit, that would add a full percentage point to our GDP. Remember, growth is the goal. And people forget, and again, these wonderful economists who, uh, who love to rhapsodize about free trade, don't tell us that every dollar that we spend on imports is subtracted from our GDP. So right now, nearly 4% of our GDP growth is hacked away every year by this, uh, by our trade deficit. We have an $800 billion goods trade deficit, a $550 billion overall deficit when you take out services. The other thing we hear a lot about is how wonderful services are. Well, that's great. The trouble is services do not entail nearly as many well-paying middle-class jobs as does manufacturing. No, you're right about that. Manufacturing Lee, what, what, is great. What would happen, though, if... If, you know, we buy a lot of stuff abroad because Americans tend to be richer people and we like to get stuff and we do get a lot of stuff from a lot of countries and the appetite for the stuff that we have just can't keep up with that abroad because they're not as wealthy and they don't have the wherewithal to buy as much. What if it's something like that that, that can't be fixed by going tower for tower for tit for tat? Well, first of all, it's not going to be tit for tat because, again, because we're $800 uh, in the hole on goods, if we put a tariff on, it would, there's, uh, they, they are going to run out of uh, export to, uh, exports to us long before the, uh, we hit the 800 billion. So it's mathematically impossible for the, the tariff retaliation to match what our tariff would be. But there, there's plenty of disposable income to buy American goods. Do you know who the number one car exporter in America is? BMW. BMW exports more vehicles than any other company. So guess what? They can do a lot more of that. As you know, Toyota and Mazda are building a $1.6 billion plan in the U.S. There's nothing wrong, obviously, with building things in the U.S. We just need policies that make that more attractive. We have a, the one import that we have a significant tariff on is uh, light trucks, uh, pickup trucks. 25% tariff. Guess what? That is the fulcrum of the American automobile industry. Uh, and Toyota makes its trucks in, here in uh, Texas and Houston. So it's worked it out very well for the United States. It's mighty rich for us to judge other nations for doing what we're doing with light trucks, right? 